Hi, this is Susan Galanis from the Center of Excellence in Learning and Teaching, the CELT, and welcome to this recording of Blackboard Learn Basics for MBA faculty. The first thing we're going to do is log in to Blackboard Learn. To find Blackboard Learn, you can type in a, up in the URL, concordia.blackboard.com. It'll take you to the login screen where you'll enter your username and password, the same ones that you use to get into the portal. Before we move on, a couple of other options for finding Blackboard Learn. One is to go to the portal, mycuw.edu, and as of this recording, if you look on the faculty tab, there's a Blackboard Learn channel. And here it is in the middle of my screen. And there you can see a URL, concordia.blackboard.com, the same one that we just entered a couple minutes ago. Soon, there probably will be an icon up here where the angel is that just has not happened as of this recording. A third way that you can find Blackboard Learn is to go to the CUW website. And if you click on links on the right-hand side, you'll see a link to Blackboard. So that's another way to access Blackboard. So once you've logged in, this is called the My Institution page, and it's going to show uh, where your courses are, the courses that you have. And um, when you first log in, most likely this My Courses, this box here is called a module. This My Courses module is probably going to be over here on the right. And as you can see, if you want, you can just click on the title up here and drag it to wherever you would like. I like it front and center. Then you'll see a list of courses here. If you want to arrange your courses by semester, up here again under next to my courses, if you hover your mouse, you'll see this little gear. Click on that gear. And here you'll see at the top of the page under terms, it says group by terms. The first time you log in, it probably will be unchecked. Just check that box and click submit. And now you'll see your courses grouped by term. So now you'll click into your course. In this case, we're going to find the Blackboard training course. Once you're in your course, this is the course homepage. And you will see different modules here that are default. And again, like your the My Institution page, you can move these modules around. And if you do move them around and reposition them, they will also be repositioned for your students. To find course content, you'll navigate throughout, throughout the course by using this bar here. It's called the course menu here on the left. And to find content, you'll click on content. And you can think of this as the lessons tab in Angel. So instead of the lessons tab, you'll be clicking on content. And then you'll see your course content for MBA courses, it should be populated by uh, the master shell content items, some of which you see here. You can also add content and your own content to the course. And we're going to add a couple of things. The first one is a content folder. Here you can see I've created one weekly folder. You may wish to create a folder for each week or each session. And to do that, you'll hover your mouse here on this Build Content button. Then you'll click on Content Folder. Then you'll name it. If you want to provide an additional description to students or for yourself, you can put it here. And then you'll see some standard options common with many of the items that you'll be adding. Um, it, the default for a folder is for students, the users, to be able to view it. You could track number of views, and you could also restrict when the folder or item is viewable by clicking and then choosing your dates, when it is open and viewable, and when it will close. I'm going to leave it open continuously. When you're done setting those standard options, then you'll click Submit. Then here you can see at the bottom of the content pane, you can see where that week two folder was added. 
Anytime you add content, it will be added to the bottom of this content pane. And to move it, you can hover your mouse on the left side. You'll see the square, uh, the four arrows shaped in a square, and you'll see that yellow bar. Then you can just click and then you can drag and move things around. So that's adding a content folder. Next, I'm going to show how to upload a file. I'm going to do it again from this content pane, this overall content pane outside of the folders. So to do that, again, I'll hover over this Build Content button, and then I'll click on File. I'll name the file, for instance, a syllabus. Then I'll browse my computer to find it. Then I've got a couple of options here. I could open it in a new window, which is very handy if you're uploading a PDF. Um, and again, these standard options of allowing users to view it or to track number of views or to make it viewable only during a certain time frame. When you're done setting those options, you'll click Submit. And again, here you'll see it at the bottom of the content pane. Now, if like. I said before, if you wanted to move it on this content pane, you can just click and drag. If, for instance, this file, you wanted to put it in a folder, you could have clicked in that folder and uploaded that file, but if you forgot or decide later you want to move it, you can hover your mouse over the title of the file. You'll see this little arrow. Click on that, and you've got some options. You could edit it to rename it. The one I'm going to do, you could delete it. Um, the one I'm going to show you here is to move it. So click on Move. And then it's going to ask where do you want to move it in your course. So I'm going to click on Browse. And it's going to show a hierarchy of all my folders. If I wanted to put it in my Week 2 folder, I just click on Week 2 and then click Submit. Now you can see the syllabus is no longer at the bottom of the content pane. And when I click on the Week 2 folder, there it is. That's where I've moved it. So I'm going to go back to the content pane. I'm going to click here on this content link rather than clicking on this back button on the browser. I don't recommend clicking on the back button of the browser. It could potentially undo some of the work you've done. So either um, use the links here in the course menu or you will see once you go into, for instance, I'm going to go into a folder, then you'll see what's called these breadcrumbs, and you can go navigate back and forth um, here if you like. For instance, I'm just going to go back one, go back to the content folder, the overall content pane, excuse me. So now we've uploaded a file, we've created a content folder. Next, we're going to create a discussion forum. And to do that, I'm going to create that in my Week 2 folder. So now here, I'm going to hover over this Tools button, and then I'm going to click on Discussion Board. I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to create a new forum, and I'll explain this box a little bit later. So I'm going to create a new forum, and I'm just going to call it MBA Forum for now. If I had a description, I would put it here. And then I'm going to go over some of these options, some of the most important ones. By default, this form is available and viewable to students. As with many of the items, I could make it viewable only during a certain time frames by clicking these boxes and entering the dates. And now here's some important options I would like to describe. The default is to make it a standard view for students, meaning um, they can view all threads and all responses, and then they can post their own and create their own thread. If you want, you could do what we call an angel, a post first discussion forum by clicking this option, meaning before students can see other responses, they first have to create their own thread and respond to your prompt before they 
can see other answers. If this is the choice that you make to make it a post first, then the prompt will go here so that the students can view it. If you did a standard view, you could make your prompt one of the threads. But if you made it a thread and it was post first, the students would not be able to see it. So in this case, I'm going to make it a post first discussion. So I put my prompt up there, even though I didn't type a full question. If you would like to grade the forum, then you'll click this box. Some settings will be set for you to make that happen. Then you'll put your points possible. I'm just going to put a default of 100 because it matches with a 100% grading scale. You could put a due date and that would show up on a module called a to-do list for students in their course homepage and they could see when they need to respond to the forum. And then for this subscribe option, the default is to allow members to subscribe to the forum. I'll show you where that button is to subscribe to the forum. And I recommend that you do allow members to subscribe. What that will do is it allows you and the students to receive email notifications in your CUW email that um, there is activity in the forum. If you don't allow subscriptions, then the students will have to go into the forum to see if it is active. This just helps them to see what conversations are happening and what the active conversations are, and they can keep up without always having to log into Blackboard. So those are the settings that I wanted to highlight. When you're done, you click Submit. And now, We've created the forum, and now what we do is we'll actually link it into our content area. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a minute. So here I'm going to select it. Here's my MBA forum, and then I'm going to click Next. And it shows my title. If I had some instructions, I could put them here. And again, this availability option and these other visibility options that I'll leave as default, and then click Submit. Now here is the forum, and it is in my Week 2 content folder. Now, I mentioned earlier that the forums are linked into the content. The actual discussion forums can be found under that content link. If you click on Discussions, this is where all the forums actually reside. No matter where you put them in your content folders, you can access all discussions by clicking on that this discussion link. And students can do that as well. Here you can see I've got two, and this MBA forum is the one I just created. And you can go in and respond to the forums through this discussion link and look at all of the forums, the list of all of them or you and the students could go through the content area and just click on the session folder where they reside. Just two different ways to access the same thing. Now to view, we're just going to choose this view for now. We're going to take a look at a discussion forum that has a couple of posts to view them and to grade them and to subscribe to them. So I'm just going to click on the forum I want to view. And now I can see there's one thread that has been created and a couple of posts here. Now before I go in and look at those posts, here's that subscribe button. So by clicking that subscribe button, you will be, I will then begin getting email notifications when others start responding to it. And then when I'm done, maybe after I'm done grading the forum, I could click that unsubscribe so that even if students continue to post, if I've already graded, I don't care to see them or get them in my email, then I can unsubscribe. But even if you didn't unsubscribe, once the posting um, stops, then you'll stop getting the, the email notification. So it's completely up, up to you if you want to un unsubscribe or not. I'm just going to unsubscribe for now. Then to view the post and reply, you'll click on the thread. And then here's the initial post. And then here are a couple of replies. If I wanted to reply to that post, I'll just click this reply button, type my response, and click Submit. And now there's my response at the bottom. Now I'm going to go back to the forum. Here's another way to navigate 
sometimes you will see at the bottom of a page this OK and then a back arrow. So by clicking that OK, if it's available, it's just going to take you back one. So I'm going to click there. So now I've read those posts. I have nothing else left to read. So now if I wanted to grade this forum, I can click on this grade discussion forum. Now if there were a full roster of students, they would all be listed here. In this case, I just have my one test student in it. Then I can go and click on this student and click on grade. And now it looks similar to reading the posts. I can see all of the posts for that student. I could reply here if I wanted to. But then I can also provide some feedback just to this learner. And then I can enter a score to grade it. Once I click Submit, then that score will be entered into the Grade Center. It will be viewable to the student in their My Grades section, and they'll be able to see that feedback. If you wanted to just enter feedback and not, if you wanted to continue grading before submitting, you could save it as a draft if you wanted to. I'm going to click Submit. And now it's graded. The student can now view the grade and they can view the feedback from you. So that's discussion forums, viewing, subscribing, reading, and responding, and grading the forum. I'm going to click this OK button to take me back. And now we are going to create one other content item that's gradable. It's called an assignment. And an assignment is what a Dropbox was in Angel. And sometimes I find myself still titling them Dropboxes and referring to them as Dropboxes because an assignment is so general, sometimes it gets confusing. So you might hear me say assignment Dropbox or assignment or Dropbox. And I will, I use them fairly interchangeably, but I'll try to be um, as clear as possible. So to do that, so to create a assignment slash Dropbox, I'm gonna click over here to my content area. And I'm going to scroll down here to my week two folder. And now I'm going to click on assessments. Then I'm going to click on assignment. Again, this is creating a Dropbox. Then I'll name it. I'm just going to call it SA4 Dropbox. I can enter any instructions for the students. If I have a file, I could attach it for further explanation or any file you feel is necessary for the assignment. I can enter a due date here. And again, I mentioned previously, if a due date is entered, then it shows on the student's homepage, their course homepage, um, when it is going to become due. It starts uh, giving them an indication that, it is a, that due date is approaching. And I'm just going to change the due date to sometime in the future. All right, you'll enter your points possible. You could add a rubric, and um, there are some fantastic tutorials on the CELT blog. If you go to blog.cuw.edu slash CELT, um, on the right-hand side, there is a section for uh, Blackboard Learn for Instructors, and there are a wealth of tutorials and videos for you, and one of them includes adding a rubric which will not be covered here in this in today's video. So here you've got some other options. I'm going to click on Submission Details. You could make it an individual or group submission. You could, you could um, allow, by default, just one attempt, or you could allow multiple attempts and specify two or three attempts, or however many, however many you want, or unlimited attempts. Completely up to you. And this plagiarism tools, is a very nice option embedded in the assignment or Dropbox feature. Um, you can have the items that are submitted um, checked against the resources that are in the SafeAssign database. And that is the tool that, that Blackboard uses. It's called SafeAssign. So if you want to do that, check for potential plagiarism. You'll click this box to check submissions for plagiarism using SafeAssign. I recommend allowing students to view that originality report for their attempt. Um, it's a learning tool. Um, rather than being punitive, it allows them to learn. And then um, 
excluding, this is an important option, to exclude the submissions from the institutional and global, global references databases. Um, you may choose to, and to create an assignment or a Dropbox for draft submissions and then a separate one for final paper submissions. And if you do that, I strongly recommend that for the draft submissions assignment or Dropbox that you exclude those submissions from the database. Um, if you do that, if it's for drafts, you probably will allow unlimited attempts. And because if you didn't exclude the submission from the database, the next time that draft is submitted, it will appear to be 100% plagiarized. However, once if you create a separate assignment or Dropbox for the final paper, then you could then, in addition to generating that originality report, then you could submit that paper to the database for future comparisons. So this, I'm going to set this up for a final paper submission, so I'll make it a single attempt, and I will not exclude the submission from the database. And you've got a couple of options here, grading options. Anonymous or delegated grading probably would not be done. If you have questions about that, please feel free to contact Justin Frisk or me, Susan Galanis, in the CELT. And then you have the option of how you want to display your grades, either a score or a percentage um, are the defaults. If you are interested in learning more about gradebook settings, uh, again, there are a wealth of tutorials uh, regarding the Grade Center. And I'll leave these others as default. Default is to make the assignment or the Dropbox available. And again, these other display options that are standard on many of the things that we're creating and that we've already talked about. Then you'll click Submit. And there is the essay for Dropbox or assignment. And those are those instructions that I included. And that's where they would appear. To view and grade assignments, you will not click on the Dropbox. That's something that was done in Angel, where you clicked on the submissions. To view and grade assignments, instead, in Blackboard Learn, you'll click here on Grade Center. And then you'll click on Needs Grading. And I've got a couple of things entered here. And this is one Dropbox. It's a Test Essay 1 Dropbox or assignment where I allowed multiple submissions. And there's two here. I'm going to take a look at one of them and grade it. So I'm just going to click on the title. And now here's where the paper appears. This is a very nice feature of Blackboard Learn called inline grading. Here you'll see the paper and you can scroll down to view the different pages and there is no need to download the paper to your computer and rename it and upload it. You can enter feedback and grade it right here in Blackboard Learn and those comments will be saved. To enter a comment, you've got a couple of options. There's this drop down menu here where it says comment and you've got point comment, area comment, text comment. I'm going to show you an area comment. I just like how it looks visually. You can experiment with, with some of those others. So with that area comment, I could take my crosshairs and drag it over an entire area. And then I'm going to comment about it. So you can explore these other different ways to comment. And I could continue to do that and add different comments. I'll do a point comment also just to show you what that looks like. So if I wanted a point there. Again, you can see it points and then you can enter a comment and type in a comment. If it's something I decided I didn't want to um, share with the student, I could just click this delete and it would go away. I could also click on this draw button and pick different colors and I could draw right in the document if I wanted. I could highlight different highlighting colors. Um, or I could strike things out and all kinds of options here. When I'm done with my feedback, then I can enter a score. 
And when I do that, I could enter, if I wanted, some additional general feedback to the student. Enter the score. Then if I did use safe assign for this assignment, it is not enabled on this particular assignment, but if it were, there would be another link here that says safe assignment. And I could click on it and it would allow me to view that originality report. So once I'm done grading, I've entered my score, I've entered my comments, I've entered my feedback, then I can click Submit. And now the feedback is available to students, as is the score, and that score has been entered in the Grade Center. Next, I'm going to show you how to delete an assignment. If you allow multiple submissions or unlimited submissions, there may be times that um, you want to delete those additional submissions, or if you allow only one submission, the student may accidentally upload an incorrect file. You'll need to delete it so that they can then submit another, the correct file. So to do that, I'm going to again under Grade Center here, I'm going to click on Full Grade Center. And now here I can see for this test student, here's this Test Essay 1 Dropbox. And that's the one I just graded where I entered a score of 85. And then also I see this icon here, this circle with the exclamation point. That means there's some, another submission there that needs grading. Or if I'm not going to grade it, then I could delete it. If you're ever wondering what any of the icons mean, you can click on this icon legend. And you can see that means needs grading. So to delete that additional assignment, again, either I just don't want to see that needs grading icon or it was an incorrect submission and I want the student and the student wants to submit, wants to submit a correct one, I'm going to hover on this cell for this student and I'll see this down arrow. I'll click on it. Then I'm going to click on View Grade Details. Now here it's going to show for this particular assignment Dropbox, it's going to show all the attempts if I allowed more than one. Now if I only allowed one attempt, I could clear it and then it would allow me to um, give the student another opportunity. In this case, I've graded one. This one, I'm not going to grade it. It's kind of in my way. I just want to clear it and get rid of it. So I can just click Clear Attempt. It's going to ask you to be sure do you want to delete it? Click OK. And now it's gone. And that's all there is to it. Again, here is down at the bottom right is this Return to Grade Center, a little navigation um, option if you choose. I'm going to go back to that Full Grade Center. And now I'm just going to show you a few basic things about navigating through with the Grade Center. Again, if you're interested in learning more about setting up a Grade Center, you can visit the CELT blog, blog.cuw.edu slash CELT, or you can, on that page you can also check for uh, specific trainings for the Grade Center, for faculty, um, or to attend a Blackboard Basics training for faculty, not MBA faculty, but just faculty. That includes a more in-depth description of the Grade Center. So here, as you can see, just going to highlight a few things. Um, here is a scroll bar. It's going to help me scroll between all the columns. If I had a full roster of students, they would all be listed down here. Here's a total column that will just track the number of points. Um, and then for each gradable item that I created, then a column is automatically created for you in the Grade Center. That's a very a key difference between Angel and Blackboard. In Angel, you had to set up the Grade Center first with your categories and your assignments. Here, it is done for you as you create your gradable items, and then you do some final adjustments at the end of adding all your content. So here is my discussion forum, the essay that I created, and then um, a couple more that I had created previously. There is one here for participation. That I wanted to highlight. If you grade for participation, that's not something that is submitted, so a, a column is not automatically created. But if you had something like participation or, for instance, a pencil and paper exam that's done during class where nothing is submitted, 
you could actually create a column in the Grade Center just to track those scores, and then you would manually enter a score. So I'm going to click on Create Column, and I'm just going to call this Final Exam. And there's some optional um, descriptions. Um, primary display, do I want to show a score or a percentage? Um, a category, um, that comes into play with a percentage-based gradebook. Again, that um, if you're interested in a percentage-based gradebook or using the Grade Center um, to its full capacity, you're encouraged to attend um, an additional training. I'll put my points here for my final exam. Let's just say it's 100. Again, these standard options for due dates and um, making it viewable. When I'm all done, I'll click Submit. And now, anything I add to the Grade Center, any columns, it's going to be added to the far right. So here's my final exam. And then to grade something manually, again, if this were a paper and pencil exam, and if the student got a 90, I just click on that cell for that student, enter a 90, and click Enter. And then the grade is entered. If I want to move, the last thing I'll show you is another way to view the columns, and you can reorder these columns if you like. And to do that, I'm going to go up to Manage, then I'm going to go to Column Organization. And here are all the columns in this course. Rather than going left to right, like in the full grade center, it goes top to bottom. Then I can see, here's that final exam column that I added. It's at the very bottom. If I wanted to move it, I can just hover my mouse over the square with the four arrows, click, and then drag it to wherever I want. And then once I've done that, um, I could also show or hide columns. Let's say I wanted to, um, this weighted total, again, that comes into play with a percentage-based gradebook. It's currently hidden, but if I wanted to show it, I would click on it, and then come down to this show slash hide. I would click on show, then it would be visible. When I'm all done making my changes, then I'll click submit. Now you can see I moved my final exam column and that weighted total is now visible. The last thing that I'm going to show you is how to open your course to students. Um, if you ever see up underneath the name of the course, it would say course is unavailable or course is unavailable to students. That means you can get in the course and see the information, but the students cannot. And to make it available to students, you'll click on customization here on the left. You'll click on Properties, and then under the Set Availability, it says Make Course Available. Mine is set to Yes. Yours would be set to No. Click Yes, and then click Submit. Then the course is available. All right, I'm going to click back on my content. And one last thing I do want to show you is this edit mode. Up here in the upper right-hand column, excuse me, the upper right-hand corner, edit mode is on. That means you can make changes. That means that things that are not visible to students, you can view them. Occasionally, the edit mode will be turned off. Nothing that you've done. It will just by default be set to off. And then you'll see the buttons to add content are gone and folders that were hidden cannot be seen. If that ever happens, if you are looking, you're trying to add content and you can't, there's a folder you know is there but you don't see it, look in the upper right hand corner and you'll see edit mode is probably off and just click on it and turn it on. Okay, this concludes the Blackboard Learn Basics for MBA faculty. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Susan Galanis. G-A-L-L-A-N-I-S, or Justin Frisk, F-R-I-S-Q-U-E, or you can also email for face-to-face -face classes, seltsupport at cuw.edu. Thanks.